We just covered that we cannot directly calculate individual ionic activity coefficients, so using them to calculate an average activity coefficient is also not a good strategy. However, Peter Debye and Enric Huckel developed a theory to determine the average activity coefficient. Central to their theory, they assumed that each charge was surrounded by a cloud of opposite charge, which lowers the potential energy of the system. This results in the average activity coefficient being less than 1. One could imagine that at low concentrations, the oppositely charged ions could surround each other without interfering with similarly charged ions. However, as the concentration of ions increases, similarly charged ions will start to interact with each other in a significant way. Therefore, the debye huckel law becomes valid as the concentration of the ions approaches zero. In the opposite extreme, when the concentration of ions in the solution is large, empirical modifications should be employed. For small ionic concentrations, we can employ the debye huckel limiting law to calculate the average activity coefficient since it is equal to the log of the average activity coefficient is equal to negative a times the absolute value of z plus times z minus times i raised to the power of one half, where a is a constant for water at 25 degrees Celsius, a is equal to 0 0.509, z plus and z minus is the charge of the positive and negative ions respectively, and i is something called the ionic strength of the solution, and it is defined in terms of the molalities of all ions in the solution where I can be calculated as 1 half times the sum over I, being all the charged particles in the system, and the sum goes over Zi squared, being the charge squared, times the molal concentration of species I, divided by the standard molal concentration. Let's now use the debye huckel limiting law in the context of a problem so that we can get a better idea as to where the values one would put into it come from. And so, what we ultimately want to do with the debye huckel limiting law is calculate a mean activity coefficient. And so in this case, we're going to calculate one for ions, where we have a total concentration of 0 0.001 moles per kilogram of Na2SO4 aqueous at 25 degrees Celsius. And so the first thing that we need to do whenever we calculate the mean activity coefficient in this way is that we need to calculate the ionic strength, which is this expression that's equal to 1 half times the sum over i of zi squared times the molal concentration of component i divided by the standard molal concentration. Recall for this dissociation of Na2SO4, what we had was this Na2SO4 solid going and being added to water, which is a liquid, and this is in equilibrium so that we have 2Na plus aqueous plus SO4 2 minus aqueous. And so in this case, this will help us inform what values we're going to put into this ionic strength expression. Because in this case, I'm going to write I is equal to 1 half. And in this case, I'm going to write this sum. So for the first part of the sum, I'm going to use the sodium plus ions. And so in this case, the Zi is the charge on the sodium atom. In this case, that's 1. So I'm going to write 1 squared. The molal concentration of the sodium plus ions is 0 0.001 times 2, since that's the total concentration of sodium ions, since the original concentration was 0 0.001 moles of Na2SO4 per kilo of water. So that's why I'm writing 2 times 0 0.001. And then the standard molal concentration is 1, which I'm going to write as the denominator. And because this is a sum, then that means I'm going to write the second part of this sum, which is now the SO4 2 minus, and in this case the charge on the SO4 2 minus, that's the Zi term, is negative 2, so we have minus 2 squared times its concentration, it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio between Na2SO4 and SO4 2 minus, so I just write 0 0.001, and to that I'm going to then divide it by 1, the standard mole concentration. So if I evaluate this expression, or I simplify, I get I is equal to 1 half, times 0 0.002 plus 0 0.004. And what this leaves me with is an ionic strength of 0 0.003. So now that we have the ionic strength, we can now use the debye huckel limiting law to calculate the average activity coefficient. And so in this case, we would write then the logarithm of the average activity coefficient is equal to negative a times the absolute value of z plus times z minus 
times the square root of the ionic strength. And so again, on the left-hand side, I'm going to have the, the logarithm of the average activity coefficient. A in this case, because I'm at water with 25 degrees Celsius, is just going to be equal to 0 0.509. The charge on the sodium, which is the plus or the positive ion, is 1. The charge on the negative ion is minus 2, the SO4 2 minus, absolute value. And then I have the square root of 0 0.003. And so if I evaluate all of these terms, I get the log of the average activity coefficient, and that's equal to negative 0.056. And finally, if I do the inverse of a natural logarithm, or sorry, of a logarithm base 10, then that would mean that I'm going to take 10 to the power of whatever value it is. So I'm going to have then the average activity coefficient is equal to negative 0.0 or 10 raised to the power of negative 0.056, which makes it equal to 0.88. As we have said previously, the Debye-Huckel limiting law is only valid for dilute solutions, meaning low ionic strength, since we are assuming that like charges are distant enough not to interact with each other significantly. The more concentrated the ions in solution, the further the activity coefficient deviates from the Debye-Huckel limiting law. In these cases of high ionic strength, we must use empirical corrections to fit the data. One such empirical expression is called the Davies equation. It is expressed as the logarithm of the average activity coefficient is equal to negative 0.509 times the absolute value of z plus times z minus times the square root of the ionic strength divided by 1 plus the square root of the ionic strength minus 0.3 times the ionic strength. And as the ionic strength decreases, the Davies equation approaches the Debye-Huckel limiting law. In the figure on the right, there is a plot of the logarithm of the average activity coefficient versus the square root of the ionic strength. There is a blue line and a parabolic red curve, where the decreasing blue line illustrates the Debye-Huckel limiting law, and the red curve illustrates the Davies equation. These two curves deviate when the square root of the ionic strength is greater than 0.2. We will use this value as the threshold to shift from using the limiting law to the Davies equation.